All right, continuing on with the TMCC Library Open Genealogy Lab Outstanding Guest Speaker Series, today we are pleased to present Joe Bott. Prior to retirement, Joe was Principal Scientist and Research Professional with a BA focused in biology from Rowan University. Dead Fred was created by Joe and has since turned into a full-time retirement project. Dead Fred allows users to upload old photos of their ancestors and search for photos in numerous ways. Best of all, it's completely free. You don't even have to register unless you want, wish to add photos or details to photos. So I would like to offer a warm virtual welcome to Joe. Thank you. Yeah, well, let me start in the beginning. I guess that's the best, best place to start. Uh, I've been collecting photo, photos for many years now, since late, actually 1965. When I was in the uh, Navy, I was stationed in Newport, Rhode Island, and I was walking down the street and got caught up in a rainstorm and ran into an antique shop just to keep myself dry. And I, I didn't want to look like I, I looked like I was watering, watering there. So I had to look, look like I was going to buy something. Now I was 19 years old. So 19 year old sailor in an antique shop uh, is questionable, at, at least that. So I, I, I walked around the shop and looked around, touch stuff. But I found this photo album and uh, it was, was 1800s. And I just absolutely fell in love with it. It's kind of like saying, buy me. You know, I didn't have, Navy didn't pay a lot of money back then. So I had like 18 bucks in my pocket. But I worked out a deal and I was able to buy it. And I bought that, that, that album. And I've been buying photos and albums ever since. So 65 to 2000. Now, I don't know. Right now, 2023, I don't buy them anymore. People send them to me almost on a daily basis. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let me back up. So I started collecting. By the time I, um, I guess you could say 1998, I had about five, 6,000 photographs. Uh, and uh, I got very sick. I got laid up. I had uh, encephalitis. And I was out of work for four, four months. And I was driving my wife absolutely crazy. So she went out and bought me a computer. And see here, do something with this. So I, I did. I started putting photographs on my AOL account. Started finding out who they belong to, and I actually hit one person from Fort Lee that uh, I found a picture of his mother. It was a baby at the time, and his grandmother. And that that kind of like that hit that hit the spark. That that, that got me going. So I I started a re, uh, reunion site with uh, a company I hired out of uh, the neighborhood here. And uh, it grew up fast. It grew a lot faster than I expected it to, because this was going to be a, an event for my retirement. And uh, by the time I did retire, which was seven years later, uh, I had thousands and thousands of people hitting the website and asking about uh, photographs and actually adding their photographs uh, you know, it's a free site. I don't charge anybody anything. Uh, if you find a photograph of a relative and it belongs to the archive, not if it belongs to somebody else, if it belongs to the archive and it's your relative, you get it. We'll send it to you for free. Uh, right now, uh, start, actually, there's two. Well, I was waiting to come on this uh, program. Two, uh, two people uh, found some relatives. So right now I have 3,250 photographs that have been found. Approximately 600 of them have been sent home. Not all of them get sent home, but uh, somewhere around 600. You know, when I started out, I, I didn't keep good records because that wasn't my intention to burden myself with a lot of data. But it seems that now with uh, so many photographs uh, indexed, filed, that I have to keep track of them somehow. Right now, I've got 12,600 photographs that have been indexed. I have them in my, uh, my room down here, and they're all in boxes. They're numbered, and I have a database that directs me to where they're at when somebody finds a photo and says, hey, I got a picture of, you got a picture of my great-grandmother. Photo number is one, two, three, four, five. 
I can go to my database and pull it up and find out where it's at. Sometimes the photograph has been found before and it's been sent off, but not too often. So basically that's, that's, that's how this whole thing started. Uh, I had a, uh, I hired a, I hired a company, got a couple of folks that work with me on this uh, website, uh, Amanda uh, and Jeanette and Daniel, uh, and they help uh, Amanda build the database. And then she said, step back when she had her family and Daniel came in and he, he controls the, uh, the gears. If something goes wrong, he takes care of it. Jeanette is a, uh, is a scribe. She does a good job writing the book. Matter of fact, we have a book for, we sell. We sell. Uh, you can see it on the website, left-hand side. She edited the book and, it, and she brought a lot of people from the uh, genealogy world in to add pieces of uh, their knowledge to this book. Uh, Megan Schmolenak, uh, Lisa Also, Marine Taylor, uh, and there's a there's a number of people on there. I even wrote something in there. I'm not a genealogist, but I, I wrote a little, little bit of information. Uh, no, I'm not a genealogist, and I do respect what you folks do, or it's a, it's a very, exact science and uh, even though I was a principal scientist for many years, a uh, scientist for many years and retired as a principal scientist, that was in the food industry. And I'll tell you, food is nowhere as tight as far as regimentation as genealogy is. So I, I do really respect the knowledge and the work that you folks do to get the information you need to, you need to get. So with that, uh, I'll take you through the website. I think I'll start with um, how it works. You come to the website for the first time and you want to see if you you got an ancestor on, uh, on the site. So we, I have five, way, five ways to search. Uh, you got a quick search, just put a name in. Uh, let's see, have a, have a Smith, that's a, that's a tough one, Smith. So we go ahead and pull Smith up. We got 1,085 Smiths on this site. That's kind of hard to go through unless you were to browse through this. But that's uh, basically a quick, a quick uh, search. But if you want to do a, uh, you want to do a little more of a detailed search, you can do Smiths. Uh, how about in Pennsylvania? Uh, yeah, here we go, Pennsylvania. And yeah, so we got we got a lot of Smiths that came out of PA. Tells you where they're at. You, see, you can click on their photograph and, uh, and see if you recognize any of the faces. If not, that's all right. You can also, uh, let's see here. You can also look at the, uh, how long? How am I going to do this? Um, I'm a little bit confused on how this thing's working. But anyway, okay, let's go back to where we were. Uh, detail search, Smith, PA. Uh, country, state. And we click on, there's Barbara Smith from Latrobe, PA, and that'll give you some information. Um, tells you a little bit about her and who's in the photograph. Uh, there's a lot of Smiths in this one, big family. You can click on each name, and it'll take you to that person. And uh, if that's somebody you feel it's a relative, you can contact the submitter by clicking here, put your email in, your name, and any comments you might have. And that'll go right to the person who submitted it. And if they have, uh, and then you can communicate with them. Uh, other records that these people submitted, uh, just that one photo looks like. And they have, a, there's a photo for each name. 
So we will go back and go back to the home page. Now, if you have any particular uh, research you want me to do here, like put in a special name or a special thing, ask away. I'll be here. I can, if I can answer it, I will. So anyway, five ways to search. You have quick search surname. So you click on a surname. Let's see, uh, P. And of course, there's a lot of P's in this world. And uh, you can go down and pick a, pick a, a name. And I have a pastor. I don't think Louie's in there, but there's a pastor from Huntington, Indiana. Uh, freshman class photo. There it is. And if you can find out where she's at in here, that'd be nice. Also, uh, if you go to P and you scroll down, uh, I think you might come across some photo albums. I've posted a number of albums. Um, you know, when I started posting photos to the archive, uh, I had a dial up computer. So it, it was after, it was laborious, to say the least, when I have uh, posted these these photo albums, and uh, when when high speed internet came through, it was just like an amazing magic, and made my world very very uh, easy, much much easier. Um, but although, although uh, I was faster at doing it, I, I continued to add more photos as I uh, progress. So that's what I did. Uh, my wife, uh, we've been married for 44 years now. She goes, she's got me where she's always wanted me, downstairs in the cellar, uh, not getting in any trouble. So that's what I've been doing. Joe, can you show us a sample of a photo album? Uh, okay. Just click one, you mean? Yeah, go ahead and click whichever one you think you'd like to share. Let's do that. Okay, how about, um, anyway. There's one I really like. I'm trying to find it. Helpers. I'll tell you a little story about the Helpers. Uh, Evangeline Helpers is out of uh, Logansport, Indiana. And she was very, very artistic. She was a designer and uh, of clothes. Uh, and when she died, her estate was put on sale. And I was lucky enough to go on eBay and find her photo albums, all of them. There's like five of them. And, uh, and she had a very, very interesting life. And she, and she was very, like I said, artistic. And she had other things. She had her, her, uh, her drawings, her art. She put that, that was also in the uh, auction. And I wasn't able to get that, but I was able to get the photographs. And later on, about a year later, the woman, the woman who bought the uh, artwork and I uh, started talking to me and we got to know each other. We found that she was, this, this, this gal was so uh, excited about Evangeline. Just like I was, just like uh, here's Gene Neff. On occasion, I get a, a somebody from um, from the family. They call, you know, lets me know that they yeah they they're related, and they uh, they don't want the item uh, for some reason. I don't know why they they didn't want the uh, album. So I still have them. If you know anybody from uh, Indiana with the uh, Evangeline Helpers, Helper last name. That would be wonderful. Okay, I just lost it, there we go. So that's that's one photo album. There's another one too uh, that I find extremely interesting. This one this from Pennsylvania, uh, Shenandoah, Pennsylvania. That's where my grandmother was. Uh, she was raised 
in Shannonville, Pennsylvania. And I found this one photograph or photo album. And it's just full of interesting things. And if I can find it on here, it might be listed under S as Shenandoah. I will go do that. Uh, a lot of scrolling. I got, I got a, my, my finger gets numb sometimes. Okay, Shenandoah. Also with Shenandoah, you get, don't get confused with Virginia. Uh, this is Pennsylvania. Oh yeah, by the way, school school annuals. I posted a number of school annuals uh, on the internet on this website, and uh, so that that took a while. And that was also during the uh, some of most of them was during the uh, dial up computer phase. So it was it was a, it was a hard one. So I'm looking for Shenandoah, which is uh, C H Shenandoah. 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 Here it is, Shenandoah. And this is this is an album. But I don't have a list of over in the photo albums, and I should. But this one here has uh, a, a very a young family, very exciting uh, times they lived through. They, they traveled up and down the mountains. They picked wildflowers, uh, just absolutely fantastic uh, what they were doing. And uh, I can't, uh, can't say enough about them. I'll, I always wonder if maybe my grandmother knew these folks because they, uh, they, they did the same thing as she did. She used to talk about this. This is 1915 right here. Uh, I always find that kind of interesting because back then, people weren't too uh, concerned about pollution. And that little creek that they were swimming in uh, had an outhouse sitting right next to it. So that wasn't a very good situation. But uh, it was great. Okay. Uh, so, Joe, this is yeah. Wendy. I, th I found my family in there. If you type in uh, Witten, W H I T T E N, in Kansas. W H I T T E N? Yes, in Kansas. Okay. Kansas, right there. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, that's your family? Yep, that's my family. Yep. That's you, my Uncle Levi. Did you put this photo up there? I did not put it up there. So that's what I was curious if you could walk us through, because that picture is actually on um, Family Tree. And I have some pictures of Levi and his wife, too, in an album that I have. Um, OK, let's take a look at it. Um, Wedding portrait of Levi and Ada, married 21st of December 1904. Okay. They, whoever posted it posted with eight other photos. Take a, take a look at them. Uh, yep. And that Jacob Witten, that's my great grandfather. Right there. That's my great grandfather. Isn't that something? You know? Let me mm -hmm. see. Now, what you, what you need to do when you contact the person who posted this, mm -hmm. is, is just go uh, go to the uh, record. What happened here? Jacob. Go to uh, contact submitter. Okay. And write to them. Say, hey, these are my relatives. Now, it's up to this folks, whoever these people are, uh, whether they want to give it up or not. But... Uh, they might like that. You could take copies of it, you know. Right. So does this? So does this mean that they have the original photo? And yeah. I, I have a feeling it's my my cousin. It's Leslie. It's Leslie. Um, okay. That has awesome. them. So, okay. hmm. but I saw that'd be good for the class to hear. So. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty. Good. It was very good. Yeah, and the Uplingers too. I I know that they're part of our family. So. But there's more pictures that he submitted, so I'd be curious to 
look at look at all those too. Um, yeah, probably have the whole bunch right here. No doubt about it. It's that's great. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. Thanks, you're Joe. Hey, Made you're my day. Made hey. my week. <laughs> all right. That's great. We got some really interesting photographs here. What and Alfred? Now, what is this? That's from Mississippi. Is that you? No, that's not. No, that's, that's not, not me you. that I know just, of. Just Kate. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, okay. Fine. Great. That's uh, these people put up uh, Witten photographs from all over the country. So I don't wonder why that is. Oh, hello. So did that same did that same person put all those ads up? Yeah, that's him when he was a little yeah. bit older. Yeah. And that would be it. He's in Kansas there. Yeah, that's a great photo right there. He uh, that reminds me of my grandfather. They all had their Kansas tuxedos, their overalls. Yeah. And their hats. <laughs> I love it. You know, these this this a lot of these photos show how how tough the people had it back then or not tough, but uh, you know they they didn't have feature covers like we do. Uh, they worked hard. You got to respect what they did. Uh, my my grandfather worked uh, the coal mines in Centralia, Pennsylvania, with his father. And there's stories to be told there. Now there's a Witten uh, in Idaho. That's not you. You're from Kansas. Okay, so. Joe, yeah. Joe, yeah. this is this is Sue. I just found uh, my ancestor uh, on my uh, American <laughs> Revolutionary line. Her last name was Barefoot. It's it's you have a picture of her there too. Is that right? Uh -huh. Let's see. Okay, let me go in there. Barefoot. I used to have a buddy of mine named Barefoot. Uh, I think there's an E, Barefoot. Oh, okay. Barefoot. Is that it? Yeah, try that. No, no. Nope. Try it over here. Yeah. Sometimes it gets kind of funny that way. Bear, B A R E F O O T. B A R E F O T T. E. Oh, okay. There it There's, is. Yep, there she is. Mary Barefoot. Slip. Okay. Pleasantville, Pennsylvania. My goodness, how many photographs did this person put up? They put up 42. So there might be some other ones there. Um, you can look through that and find, and see if you have a Chalfant. Uh, I know a Chalfant who wrote a lot of books on Henry Adams, and I have a whole list of them. So, Okay, so you got to you look through there and see what, what other relatives you might have. Get a hold of them, write to them, and uh, see if they're willing to give up the photo. So them are, so don't mind doing that. If not, just make a copy of it. They might send you a, a, a good copy, you know, however you want to do it. If you cannot get a hold of the people, you know, some of these photos have been posted back as far as 2003, and uh, sometimes the people that put them up have either moved on or moved out, and uh, you can't get a hold of them. I'll try and do that. If you can't, you get a hold of me, and then uh, I try and contact them. So they like to keep their uh, their information private, and I I have access to it, but I can't I can't give it up. So uh, I'll go ahead and try and connect with them. If I can't do that, then uh, you go ahead and just do the best you can with making a picture of it. You know, downloading it to your hard drive, printing it out for your files. But at least you have an image of it. Now I've had people find her that didn't realize they had a uh, relative, and they found out that they had this relative, and they never saw the faces before, so they didn't know they had their faces. So you know that's, that's another that's another place in genealogy that uh, adds an awful lot of depth to the uh, to the work. So and every time that happens, I, I get I get a great feeling. So I got two of you, two of you now have just seen your family's photographs. I wasn't expecting that. 
Uh, so Joe, can I, this is Wendy again. Can I ask a question? I have, yeah. um, my husband is, he's from England. He's from London. So okay. how do we, how do we, I tried to look, is it country? Is it under England? Is it under the United Kingdom? You know, how would sure. we do that? Or do you have many from Europe? Oh yeah, we got a lot from England and Canada and Australia. We got, but well, you want to know what, now you talk about your Witten photos? No, the, this this last name is Ives or Gregory, but I just okay. wanted to walk through the process for the class so they would know, you know, I didn't know if there was a drop down. Sometimes, you know, when you do countries and it lists all, you know, the United States and it lists France yeah. and it lists all those. I wasn't sure how that. So well, if you could walk us through looking at for international, that would be great, yeah. Joe. See, see where yeah. it says search photos. Okay. Click there. Scroll down country and add the country that you're trying to research. For instance, Ireland. Oops. So we have some Ireland photos. Some people are unknown, but they tell you where they're from, like Belfast, Valley Shannon. So uh, and there is 15 to a page, and there's 10 pages. So that's 150 photos. Uh, so yes, you can research it by going to search photos, scrolling down to the country, and 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 search that way. For instance, Canada. And uh, go. Okay. so you got plenty of Canada. You got a uh, 212 times 15, so you can do the math. And uh, here's the 1860s, it looks like. Um, now there's no name, but it says three children. So if you, just to, just just an aside for this, if you if you are going to post a photo, and I'm going to show you how to do that here in a few minutes, and you don't have if you don't have a name, don't leave the first name blank. Put a description of the person or child or a situation in the first name slot because it adds a lot to finding out about that person. If you leave that blank, it doesn't get the search depth that you, you would like to see. Um, I have found people have found photos because of that, they, they, they had the information put in the first name slot. Some people are willing to do that. They don't want to do it for whatever reason, but you know, if that's their decision. So that's Canada. And you can go to uh, France, Australia, New Zealand, and you've got from all over the world, except for, I don't have any, I have some from Russia. I have some from uh, Ukraine, I do believe. Uh, I can't even spell it and say it, but yeah, they're, there's, they're from all over. Uh, the, the bulk of the archive is a, is a hundred and let's see, what do we got? 153,446 records. So the majority of them is, uh, is U.S., uh, followed by Canada and Ireland, England, UK. Uh, it's plenty of those. So, yes, to answer your question, you can search individually by that. You can't do it in bulk. You can't go to Europe and see everyone individually. Um, but I hope that answers your question. That does. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. So, uh, let's see. Let me, let's go down to the right hand side here and uh, search photos, surnames, you saw that. Mystery photos is just good. Now, you know, you just go ahead and click on that. And if you don't have a last name, you put a first name in. That's basically, what, that's basically what it is. It's the same as the other one, but just doesn't have a last name. Photographers. You know, sometimes you'll have a photograph like a, uh, a cabinet card or Part of the visit, CDV, and uh, we'll have the 
photographer's name on it. So the, this this particular part here where photographers is uh, helps you track it down that way. If you know somebody is, for instance, uh, Mackenzie. Let's see. There's a there's a Mackenzie in uh, the big Iowa. So that, that helps you find if you have photos at home uh, that have the photographer's mark, but it doesn't have a name. Uh, it, it just it gets you a little bit closer to where you, where you need to be. It doesn't give you it doesn't give you names or anything like that, but it does give you a uh, it does give you a place where that person was standing at one time or other. Some people find them their family through the photographer's mark. Uh, they because they they know uh, they have copies of that not that photograph, but another photo that has their face. So they find another photograph of their relative, and that's exciting too. When you when you get a really little bit of information, uh, and they and they're able to find their photographs. Um, Let's see, what are the annuals? You can come over here for annuals, but I don't keep this updated as much as I should uh, because it involves code. And when code gets involved, I cannot do code. Code to me is gobbledygook. I don't, I have that Daniel do, does the work uh, as far as putting the code together and uh, he's very good at it. So I rely on him. Uh, so that's that's the annuals. And you can go, you can go here to Hawkeye. Now I'm from uh, Northwest Arkansas, so I got it. There's a uh, in here is the University of Arkansas, Fayetteville, and that's a lot of fun. There's people in here that are related to other people that I know. So you know, and and these and these are great. They have all kinds of uh, interesting people that are playing in sports or doing uh, drama or singing or Mary Bateman. She, she's from Arkansas. Oh, she's, and Fayetteville's borough was taken. Hog is a key word. Uh, it's not the name of the photographer in this regard. Uh, if you put in the uh, photographer's slot when you do a when you do a search hog, that will bring up. Uh, let's do this photographer hog. Heck of a name. Go pig suey hog. That'll bring up also the uh, university. Okay, scrolling down, you want the annuals, you saw the annuals, information, meet Fred. Anybody want to meet Fred? Why did, first question Joe, I usually get. Joe, Joe, before you go on to meet Fred, can I ask, is there a significance to the word hog? Is that an abbreviation for something? Yeah, it's a uh, significance for uh, go pig suey. It's an old, it's an old uh, pe people go to the football game and they, uh, and they, the hog is their uh, is mascot. So they they wear they wear hog hats, they have hats that look like hogs. They have hog shirts. They have a hog song. And uh, if you ever watch the Arkansas football game, you'll hear "Go Pig Suey" all over the place. And that's significant. That's the only thing that's significant about it. But when this when this uh, when this album was made, it really wasn't a hog back then. It was a cardinal. They were the cardinals. I put the hog in there myself. I when I uploaded this, just so that people can get find another way to get to the, get to the album. So, hope Arkansas, Arkansas is also known as the hogs. Yeah, that's what I said. That. That's right. that's what this is. This is a go pig suey. Uh, that's because they have wild, they have wild hogs here, and uh, that's all tied into it. Now, I came out here in 1993 from the south, from uh, Pennsylvania, 
And I had no idea why they called it the hog. So it was kind of odd. But now I found out was, there's hogs and the people hunt them. As a matter of fact, my granddaughter just killed her first hog. I'm not much of a hunter myself, but she was very excited about it. I can't imagine what it tasted like. So anyway, that's the hog story. It's a, and I have actually hog sh shirts that I wear. So I, I fit in with the crowd. Uh, so let's see. Okay. Um, oh yeah, did I answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Well, meet Fred. And some people think this is a craziness, but I uh, when I started this website, I had I had bought from eBay a picture of Frederick from Prussia, Frederick the Third, and dead. Now I don't pay, I don't buy photos of people that are dead. I, I find that very uncomfortable. However, uh, I knew that the value of this photograph was much more than what they were asking for it, so I had to buy it. My family, my, my boys uh, that were living here with us at the time, uh, and, and my wife and I were sitting around the table talking about how we, how, you know, what are we gonna name this website? And, uh, it was for all kinds of different names, but uh, the one that the one that uh, popped up was my son uh, said, "How about uh, when the when the photograph came in the mail? I opened it up while we were talking, and he says, let 'Let's call it Dead Fred.'" And I said, uh, "I had to think on that one, but it had it had uh, kind of stuck in my brain. It did have some some uh, connection to my." A German background, and uh, so that was that was a good thing. Uh, I like this guy. He was a he's a liberal in the sense that he started the university. You know, most of the royals back then didn't do much reading, and uh, they weren't too you know, culturally advantaged. But he did. He brought a lot of good things in regards to education to Germany. Or Prussia, I guess. So I, I admired him for that. Unfortunately, he um, when he became king, he had cancer of the throat. He couldn't talk, and he was uh, he was a king for 99 days before he died, and uh, couldn't couldn't say or uh, but that he kind of like uh, sad sad story, but. That's what happened. So I found the photograph, and he became the mascot. I'm sorry to say, of uh, the website. Well, there you are. That's that's the story of Dead Fred. Joe, oh, Joe, you look like you could have descended from him. Do you think? <laughs> there is a resemblance there. Put some yeah. glasses on him and <laughs> there you are. They get, make his beard a little grayer. <laughs> no. Yeah. Joe, Joe Jan has put a question in the chat box. She says, Do you also have a category for unknowns? I inherited some unmarked old photos from the late 1800s, early 1900s that I know are my father's ancestors, but I have not yet been able to identify who they are or even to narrow them down to which branch of his family they're in. Uh, would posting on your website help? Yeah. Uh, if so, how do I do it? If not, have you or anyone else got any ideas or suggestions? Yeah, I'll show you how to do it. Uh, we'll go through that. How much time we got? Oh, uh, is, take as much time as you'd like. We got plenty okay. of time. I'm going to go down this list here, and then I'll go over and we'll start posting some photos, and I'll show you how that works. And, then, and when she says unknown, she means there's no photographer's mark. There's, she doesn't know who they are or where they came from or how there's no no markings on on them it's like um i can't remember what what the form is called but it's like you know you turn it over and it looks like a postcard yeah that's probably what it is it's probably a real photo postcard and uh 
And they, they get, there's a lot, they used a lot of them back turn of the century. And, and what they would do is they put them in a uh, envelope. They didn't write on the back. They put them in an envelope and sent them off. Mm -hmm. and they didn't have, then they didn't have any information. But, but nobody, that's, that's, that's nobody, along, nobody along the way, you know, noted on the back of it who these people were. Yeah, so I have no names to go by. Extremely difficult. That's called uh, that's called a lost photograph right there. But you know, people have found them uh, with no information except for the picture of the person and, and who you are and where you found it and where it was purchased at. So they put the, the number of uh, they put the name of the antique shop or the goodwill well, shop. They were handed down to me from relatives. Uh, oh, okay. Well, there's a lot of information there. And you can put in the comments section where you got it, who they were, what their names were, what area that was. And you can put, actually put a, uh, uh, put a state, you know, the state where they were and say, I'm not sure if this is where this person is from in the comments section, but I believe it's in this area. And, you know, that's, that's, that's something to go on. It moves the people closer to the photo, and if they have one similar to that, or if they have one of that person in a different situation, then you have a match. Now, I have a couple that happen that way, but that's that's a big that's a big big uh, that's a tough one, but it happens. So, I mean, it, you're not going to get anybody connected to it if you don't put it up on the website. Well, I thought about, you know, I, I haven't explored that, Fred. I haven't explored the, the website so far, but I will now. But I, I'm thinking about, well, maybe I should enter at least the, sur the surnames that I know on both sides of my father's family and explore whether any of these photos are already posted on the site. Yeah. But then if they're not, how would I, how, with no, no name to enter, how, how would I enter it and, and post it? You put it in, the, in the comment section. And you would say is, well, if we go, go back to the, uh, to the first name field and put, this could be a Smith or, you know, this is a, it's possibly a Smith, and explain it down the comment section. So the comment section is a keyword searchable uh, area. So the more information you put in there, the more information the person can type in the keyword and find it. Uh, you, you don't want to put it in a surname section because you're not too sure what the surname is, but you can put it in the first name section. Say, I think this is a Smith. And then you then you finish it off down in the comment section about what have, you think about it. I have a question, Joe. Yeah. Um, how far back in time do photographs go? I mean, I can't oh. get a photograph of somebody in 1400, so. No, that's for sure. But you can, there are some photographs you can probably uh, find on occasion from the 1830s. 1838 okay. seemed to be the year they started. All right. Uh, the, the karyotypes. Uh, you uh, and then they started picking up more and more as they went towards the uh, six, 1860s and the CDVs popped in. But you, you, there's big, there's a big rush of photographs. I mean, it's, it's all over the place. Yeah. By the time you hit that 1870s, you got people taking pictures everywhere. Uh, so. Hey, 18, 1838, I believe, is the is the number you uh, want to you want to look at. Let me let me throw a name at you here. Uh, there is a gal by the name of Maureen Taylor. She is called the photo detective. And I'll tell you what: if I had to pick anybody in the world to say that knows most about photos, Maureen is the person. Uh, she she wrote. She's had a number of books out. And, uh, and and they're all about the photographs. Uh, you, you can find her on Cindy's list. You ever go to Cindy's list? 
Cindy's list has just about every all the information you need to know about genealogy. It's like it's like a grand central station for, for uh, questions about genealogy and not just that, other things too, DNA. So uh yeah, I I I I would pick Marine Taylor as the person talking about it. The uh, fine, the fine intricacies of the photographs. She uh, she wrote a um, a book about people who uh, fought in the Revolutionary War, and she was able to get their photographs just before they died. And she found them. She put them in her book. And uh, I don't have to. I can't remember the name of the book off the top of my head. I have it, but uh, it's very good. And uh, it's something to look up. I highly recommend it. Let's see. Is that okay? Did that answer your question? I guess it did. Okay. Uh, frequently asked questions. You know what they are. You can look through here and see if you've got a question. And if you do, it might be a, a get an answer. But if you don't, you reach, go to contact us, type in, type in a uh, question, and I'll answer it and I'll try as best I can. I get a lot of questions, but I, I spend most of my days answering emails and questions, and I don't mind doing that. Uh, you know, everybody, everybody has a Facebook group, so I have a Facebook group, too. And it uh, seems to be pretty popular. Uh, it's called Dead Fred's Genealogy Photo Archive. I got 50, 156,000 followers. And, uh, and, and this is a lot of, I've got a lot of information on here. Uh, this is more enjoyable, kind of like a relaxing uh, historical, there's more history than it is genealogy. Uh, but I do put pictures of uh, folks that have been found and sent home on here. And I also put photos of, uh, just photos of the people on my website. Uh, so I'm giving a presentation on the seventh for the Indiana Genealogy Society. So I put that kind of stuff up there. But if you like Facebook, there you go. You know, I understand. It takes a lot of time. What else is there? You know, I get that black thing off top with all the information. I don't know how to get rid of that. Can you help me? Somebody? Um, you can click on the little, there, are you talking about a participant uh, closed captioning? Just yeah. click, click on the little X right next to it. On the X. I don't see an X. <laughs> That's I okay. See, I see more apps, control, remote control, and a, Pause, share, chat. Uh, no, it should be, uh, if, if you're talking about the closed captioning um, comment, there should be right after it says, uh, who can see this transcript recording on, you can click right there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's not interfering on our end. I mean, unless it's okay. interfering on your end, we can yeah, see everything I, I, just I'm fine. Trying, I'm trying to navigate around. Sometimes it's kind of like in my uh, row, but that's okay. We're okay. So, uh, for instance, I, I just I just I posted a story about a woman who uh, was married five times and had a very rough life, but uh, she she survived it. And I had twenty eight thousand people that checked, you know, liked it and talked about it. And the conversation goes on. One of the problems about Facebook, you get people come in there and they start arguing, and it, it's just crazy. It's kind of like. Uh, Hummingbirds get they fight over the over stuff. So anyway, that's Facebook. If you're, if you're into that, and if not, then there's other things we can do. Uh, let's see. Where's my face? Then Fred. Um, so Joe, can I ask a question? No, this is Wendy again. Okay. So on the on the pictures that are posted on here, there are people posting them because they're saying they have them and they'd like to share them with other people yes. or that they have them and they don't know what to do with them and they want to give them to the right family. 
has to be both, but okay. more the, the more the second one. Okay. So if I reach, so I sent an, I did send a note to that Witten family just to see who had those and see if they're related to me. Um, okay. Because I've seen some of those, on, like I said, on family tree, but some of those I haven't seen, like the, there was a picture of a family of four and I had never seen that picture before and it's a wonderful picture. So uh, it'll be interesting. I'll report back to the class how that turns out. So yeah, that does sound interesting. Yeah, you know, I'll, get a, I'll, get, I'll get a copy of your, when you send your email to them, I get a copy of that. Okay, I sent it already. Well, so I don't get see it. I don't get a copy of what they send back, so I don't know what happens with it. Uh, okay. Yeah, let, you know, drop me a line. Let me know what happens. I'm curious. Okay. Uh, I keep track of uh, reunions. That's why I got that number on top of my website. That's right. I got a bracket I'll, going on. Okay. I'll, okay, I'll let you know. <laughs> All right. Good. Uh, Joe, I, I noticed this is Sue. Um, I know I noticed that uh, I looked under Bowers, B O W E R S, which is one of my ancestors' names, yeah. and um, I I saw that an obituary came up. Can they? Can people also post obituaries? Yes. Oh, okay. And they can put the, yeah, and also grave uh, gravestones. Uh, there's not a lot of them. You know, they're all tied in with family, and that's okay. Uh, yeah, I don't have a problem with that if it helps somebody finds some answers about their family, sure. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Now I have some people also who put uh, their photos on here that want to recover the cost of a uh, of purchasing when they go out to antique shops and then they uh, they buy the photos and then they, they, they ask the people who want the family uh, just to pay for the uh, mailing and whatever. That's that's okay for if they want to do it. That, that doesn't bother me. I don't understand that. But I just don't feel that. I, I don't feel right about charging somebody for a photo of their family. And I'm lucky enough, thank goodness, that I can afford to uh, get these people their photos without having to pay for it. And, that, and that's okay. Uh, not too many of them. I got that maybe out of 150,000 photos on here, I got maybe seven to have that, something like that. But um, anyway, that's something else that goes on here. There's a lot of activity, unbelievable the amount of activity and emails. And uh, I got I got people get mad at me because they can't find their relatives. They they go in there and they'll then they'll put a search word in and they'll say uh it didn't show up well, where is my family how come you how come you don't have a picture of my grandmother like you know what do you how what do you say to that i have a i had one person ask me if um if, if the photographers did they use babies that were out of dead babies from a uh, ice ice box did they keep with uh, ice box with dead babies now how do you answer that you know, that's absolutely insane. But you know how they used to take the postmortem back in the 1800s or early 1900s, uh, so that people can see their the kids. Uh, somebody got it. Somebody thought that's what they did. And I had to kind of like tell them no, it's not what they did, and without making too much of a fuss. But uh, it's interesting things you find when you're dealing with people. But uh, anyway, that's going to go in my book. I'm not going to say any names though. Uh, um, we'll be that community face group, Instagram. I'm on it. I'm on Instagram, and uh, it comes up. There it is. And this is my bragging page. This, when I find somebody who uh, has been found, or if I got a new album. Uh, I post that here. This is more of the genealogy stuff. Now, when it comes to the holidays, I'll post some photos that are not related, are not related to the, because I, I like to break, uh, I'm Santa Claus here. When I was working at my company, I was the annual Santa Claus. Uh, I had to grow my beard longer then. Let's see. So 
Yeah, I got a couple thousand photos on there. Another thing too, I, I put photos on Find the Grave. If you go to uh, Ed Fred and go down to keyword search and type in Find the Grave, uh, you'll see the photos that I have posted uh, on Find the Grave. And a lot of, you know, a lot of the photos that I've have been found. I got 1,600 I posted on Find the Grave. Uh, are found on Find the Grave. There's a lot of activity, and people do find their family uh, uh, a lot on Find the Grave. They really are active, and uh, the real help trying to get these photos home. So I put them up there. Uh, you know, I have. Let, let me uh, do a little sidetrack here. There's a woman, a lady from uh, Joliet, Illinois. She was a genealogist. She died recently. And uh, I met her years ago in Austin at the National Genealogy Society's convention. And I had a, I had a, I had a boot. So I, and, and she stopped and talked for a while. And she, and she uh, collected photos and she tried to find the people that Belong to them, the family. And she did that. And she did a lot of work uh, doing research, trying to find out about these photographs. And she put them in a, in a, in a folder, and every folder had their uh, information written on it about that photograph. Well, when she died, I got a phone call from her daughter, and she goes, My, my mom died, and she, she wanted you to have the photographs. Well, they wound up being 27 boxes, like 5,000 photographs. And I, had a, I rented, a, I rented a, uh, a van, I drove this Joliet and spent the day with her daughter and her husband, uh, the daughter, daughter's husband, and uh, we talked about Marge. Marge was a, one of those people that does a wonderful job with getting, you know, getting families connected without saying too much. And she was a wonderful lady and she was well known in her area. And uh, so I had 5,000 photographs that I didn't have. Uh, and I had, to, I, I'm almost through putting them on. I get, I get, photo, I get photos every week from people that donate their photos. And I, ha, I, I juggle them. So I try to get somebody, get them all off there. It's, it's, it's a task, it's a great task. Uh, not to stay too long on this topic, but I just got a, uh, I can't tell you the name of the company because they asked me not to, but they were, they had a, a website, genealogy website, photos, and they went out of uh, business, they wanted to retire, so they left me their photographs. There was another situation there where I had, I had to rent a van, and I drove to St. Louis and picked them up, and uh, so, you know, I've got approximately 11,000 photographs yet that's, that need to be posted. And I've got uh, probably a couple hundred a, a month that are being sent in from people all over the country. Like uh, they don't know who they are or whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start a program to uh, get folks to volunteer, hopefully. Uh, but the logistics of it all, that's just tying me up right now. But I'll keep going until I die. I don't, I have no intention of stopping this. Uh, I have a quick question again. Um, what form do people send the photos in? I mean, the actual hard copy or digitally? Oh yeah, the, the original. Uh, let me see if I can find a picture of it. Mm, I, don't want, I, don't really, I don't want to lose you. So, uh, computers are... See if I can find a picture. No, I can't. Ah. Oh. Well, there's my, there's my gang right there. Oh. That's uh, this is Jeanette with her first child. And it's described as me, the old man. Amanda. <laughs> she's the uh, code poet. And that's the that's Daniel. He uh he's the one he's the one. He's our Scotty, you know, something goes wrong with the code. He's in there fixing it up. All right. Yeah. 
you can't think of, yeah, you can't think of finance photos. Uh, he's so, heading for New Zealand. He's leaving, he's leaving town. He's going to move to New Zealand with his family. So the answer is either digitally or? No, the answer is they're, they're not digital. They're, they're the actual photo, hard copy photographs. Okay, then. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to show you a picture of the one look if I have it. Uh, okay. You know, you, you ever notice that you can't find what you're looking for when you need it, but if you're not looking for it, it really shows up. <laughs> well, anyway, and anyway, it's just picture, picture of skid, uh, a pallet loaded with boxes. Yeah. Uh, four or five tiers high and they're all originals and and there's all albums from the 1860s and uh -huh. uh, uh just tons and tons of them I, I got i got i have boxes i haven't even looked at yet uh so you don't uh, need any more well i do i don't you know, <laughs> <laughs> i was People, just testing you oh uh, yeah i know so people, you, I'm 77 now. Okay, so I figure I at least got good 30 years yet. Okay. So, you, so you're gonna have to <laughs> you're gonna have to scan all of those photos individually. Individually to post them on your site. Yes. Wow. How are you gonna do that, right? Well, I got I, I got my my dead Fred family to help. And we're working, working it out with the local genealogy societies to uh, Great. see if they can help scan. We'll see how it goes. Great yeah. Idea. Yeah. Joe, Joe, I would like to propose that maybe you might even consider uh, expanding outside of the genealogical societies. Uh, maybe you can go to the local LDS family history library in your community, and maybe people there at the church would be happy to help out and volunteer. <laughs> Also, the local sons of daughters, uh, sons and daughters of the American Revolution. Uh, you could approach the local chapters, you know, uh, of all the different lineage societies that are there locally, and they may want to get on the bandwagon and help you with this project as well. Well, wouldn't that be great? That would be wonderful. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I know Fred Anderson, he runs the uh, the LDS group here, uh, family, family. Uh, so I'll talk to him. I have. That's a great idea. I don't know. I don't know if you know Fred, Fred Anderson, but he's a he works out of Springdale, Arkansas. But he's he, he's a LDS. Well, that's that's a great idea. You know, uh, I've had people who I had library local library had a, a librarian who volunteered a couple of years back, and I gave her a hundred photos of. To, uh, you know, take care of, and she didn't. She didn't do them. She never did one of them. Mm -hmm. I, I got a little bit disappointed with that. I finally got them back. It took about six months to get them back. Uh, anyway, it's very, un very unusual for librarians not to follow through. I know. Uh, librarians she through, rock. <laughs> she, she went through a lot of uh, family issues, mm. and I. Cause or not to be able to do it. So, you know, it's, now I'm trying to find my way out of here so I can get back to where I was at. I don't know how to do that. Got all these things popping up. Now, okay, how do I get out of this? If I hit this X here, will that take, take me out of everything? I don't know. It looks like it'll take you out of OneDrive, one it looks drive. like. Okay, I'm going to try it. All right. Okay. Perfect. Oh, good. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. So there's uh, there's that. What were we looking at? <laughs> I forget. Uh, yeah, this is okay. Yeah, that. Now somebody asked me about unknown photographs. Oh, that was Find the Grave. That's that's the photos I have on Find the Grave. Unknown. I'm on Twitter too. Uh, Oh, by the way, if you have a website, you want to put your own search box in, you just go ahead and can't grab that code right there and plug it in if you know how to do that. 
You can have your own genealogy photo archive uh, search engine. And there's Fred Mark. We're, we're, I have a book. This is our book. And I'm not just trying to sell anything here. You know what I mean? I'm just showing you what I have. Now, I was telling you about Maureen Taylor. And here's some of the books that she has. Uh, very impressive what she does. And, uh, and there's more and more people getting involved in photographs than there used to be, like 20 years ago. Um, photos seem to be becoming more of a component to uh, the genealogy community, it's not like DNA, not as big. But as 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 a as a, a document to their family uh, research, there is a there is a new person. Uh, her name is Kate Kelly, and she is she calls herself the uh, photo angel, and she is kind of uh, she goes around to antique stores, and she does the same thing as Mark Rice did. She she takes the photos. And she researches them and takes them to the people that they're about related to. And she stands there with them and holds the photo and takes a picture of her and the person that had the photo, and the, the relative. Very, and she does that quite a, she does it hard. I mean, she works hard at it. So I, 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 that impresses me when people do that kind of thing. I don't have the energy for that. Uh, I get the energy to sit down and scan photos. All right. Joe, Joe, this is Sue. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that I, I took your code and I put it into the TMCC genealogy uh, uh, website, the web page, and yeah. it works It works just fine. Oh, great. Good. Leave it there. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. You want to learn how to put a photo up? I'll show you how to do that. This is how we do it. You see where it says post photos? Click. There's also a big, there's also a big banner on the home page that says post your photos. Okay, you got to read all the, all the intricacies. It's not all that difficult. Just make sure it's nothing fancy and nothing uh, untoward. Uh, every photo that's posted to the archive, I look at and approve. Uh, so sometimes you get people that put photos up here that you don't want anybody to see. Uh, so go ahead and pick a photo out that you have. JPEG, JPEG format, less than 1.5 megabytes. And uh, that'll, that, I don't have, yeah, J, JPEG. And uh, you got to click here for terms of service. That means that if you do anything wrong, I can pick your house and uh, maybe your car with it. You know, this is just, this is an easy, easy peasy thing. Just something the lawyer said we had to do to make sure we don't get sued. So I haven't gotten sued yet. I've been here for 22 years. I'm thinking of taking that out, but uh, everybody has terms of service these days, I guess. So you go in there and you take the photo whatever photo you want to take. Here's one I just sent home the other day. Uh, and you, the name is not Trump. Uh, and then you got, keep an eye on your photo number so you know what it is. Put your name, your last name first. And your first name, or whatever you want to use. Your email, if you want to use email. If I have an album, I put I, I, I what I do is I don't use my email. I use a keyword like hog. Uh, and and then when I get down to the comment section, I, I add my email. So if get contact me, contact Joe at, at deadfred.com. And uh, I use this here as, as an anchor for a uh, so it's so like can get a like an album or whatever all together. So it's, that's when you see like nine nine pages from this person. They're all tied together with that with that 
word that you decide to use. I don't know if that made any sense to you. But... So I, I, I'll put this in. This is my personal. You don't see that. All right, then you put uh, John Doe. Okay. State, New Jersey. Town, Canada. Country, USA. County, Canada. Photographer, Jacob. Yeah, I'm up to 60 mistakes a minute when I'm typing. I have uh, Parkinson's and my hands shake, so it makes it very hard to type. It makes it impossible to text. Okay, state, Jacob, Sagover State. Okay, why not PA? Why not Philadelphia? That's where I was raised in that area. So that's all you fill it in. And uh, type of photo, let's call it a uh, uh, wedding photo. They're always fun. Date range. How old were they? They're 16 and 25. Adult. Female. And then you put any anything you want in here. You all see the subject main name is uh, Smith. And Notes regarding this photograph. Load it up with anything you can to get a keyword search so people can find it. And a lot of people leave this empty and you shouldn't, but this is going to help make your photo a lot more searchable. So, um, hard, easy, fun. World War II. You know, anything like that. You know, submit it to the database. Now, if you have two people that are in the photograph, or you got 10 people that are in the photograph, then you go up, up to the top here and you click here to add more people. Don't go down here and start again. You don't need to. Let's go up here, click, click here, and just say, click the name John Smith. And then hit enter, and there you go. You can build that up as many people as you want. Now what happens is that photo comes to me and I have a section in my database where I open it up and I approve them. And then I put it on, I put them on the, uh, put them on the, the uh, website. Uh, doesn't take me, take long. I usually, I check, I check my uh, incoming about four times a day. Sometimes they get a little behind, but normally four times a day, uh, you'll get your photo be put up so people can see it, find it. And that's how you post a photo. Uh, let me show you something here. Uh, there's also this uh, keyword search. Let's do this. Um, let's go roll word to it. And these are all the guys in World War, gals, guys in World War II. Uh, there's a lot of them. I want to show you one in particular. Uh, this guy right here, I, his niece found him. He uh, he get, he was killed in uh, in Romania. He was uh, one of the first people killed during a raid on a raid on the German oil refineries called Polosti in Romania. Uh, and uh, there's a book out about his, his plane, the name of his plane and what happened to it. Uh, out of 10 crewmen, six were killed and four were POWs. He was never, never married. But his, his, niece, his niece got it and she found it. And I found it in Monroe, Louisiana, in a box with about 20 other photos of people that were being shipped overseas for the World War II. So that was kind of interesting how things like that happened. Uh, 
I, I, I put a, a large box of photos in uh, Iowa when I was working. I had to go through, uh, I think the name was Kaliski, Iowa. No, anyway, uh, I found a box of photos, but I brought them home and put them up. No more than two weeks later, a woman from Saskatchewan said, that's the photos of my whole family. Now, her family left Saskatchewan, uh, and they moved down to Iowa. And then they grew up, grew old, they died, didn't have any family left. And when they got picked up by an estate sale, I got put in a box and underneath the table. And I, I, stepped out, I found the box, and I put it up on my website. And she found it. That got put into uh, some kind of a... I think it was a radio show, uh, an NPR situation, local, but uh, also a radio show up in the Saskatchewan. We we we, could, we talk every once in a while, but that was a big that was a biggie. It was like twenty four different photographs that were her family. You know, and I don't when it comes to that, give me an idea of what you got, and I don't I don't want documentation for every photo. Uh, you know, somebody says to me, that's my uncle. And they give me a, a lot of information that's somewhat that's verifiable. Then I go ahead and send them, I'll send them to uh, And that's, that's my fun. I enjoy that. That's, that is really, really a good feeling. So I'm kind of selfish about that. I like to feel good. Uh, what else is there? Uh, pretty... Joe, Joe uh, Jan put in the chat box, you had mentioned Kate Kelly's website. Uh, yeah. Jan wanted everyone to know it's thephotoangel.net. Oh, good. Okay. Good. So, you know, if I want to say five circle, three people that I think deserve a shout out that are uh, Maureen Taylor's on the top. And I'll tell you why. She was on the Today Show several years ago, and she mentioned my website, which was a, and my, my website crashed. I mean, it, it just stayed crashed for about three days, but became very popular, because she had mentioned it, and uh, she had shown some pictures of it on the Today Show. That was a big shout out. And ever since then, we've really uh, been Keep it in contact. She's a great lady who still has a hell of a job when it comes to uh, genealogy. Uh, and there's Kelly. There's Kate. She's young. She's energetic. And she uh, she has a passion. And that's something to be looked something to look at. Uh, she does a nice job. And then of course there's Cindy uh, and her uh, her list. Uh, that is that is a, that is a uh, powerhouse. She has a powerhouse website, and if you haven't looked at it, you need to look at it. Uh, she's she's very good. Joe, I'd like to put in a plug here for our library. Uh, if anyone's interested in Maureen Taylor's books, uh, we do have those books here in our library. Oh, and, great! And, and I know we get a lot of people logging into this class who are from out of state. Uh, most public libraries do have her book. And if your local public library does not have her book, uh, please do uh, request a free interlibrary loan and your public library can get it from another library so you can read it without having to purchase it. Oh, well, well, I guess. You can get the five book, buy the book. <laughs> she has about 10 books out. She does a good job, especially that Revolutionary War book. That, that's, a, that's a good that's a good book. See the faces of the people that fought in the Revolutionary War and the stories behind it. Very good. You can have that in the, in your library. Uh, hold on. I'll, I'll look it up. I'll, I'll let you know in just a moment. While I'm looking it up, um, Joe, would you like to explain the photographs that are on the wall in the back of you? They're my friends. Uh, I've had them for years. I've got this is just a small part of what's behind me. If you could see to my right, about 18 feet, there's filled with photos on there. And over here, uh, there's another 20 feet full of photos. 
uh, over here, same thing, and over there. So this is just a small part of my walls. But uh, I bought these photos over time, and I always thought they were kind of interesting. That one lady over here, I don't know if you can see her or not. I'll move it over. Uh, this uh, lady here with the white hair, she was sent home. That's one of, our, one of my first uh, reunions. Uh, I think this guy right here is uh, is a uh, sheriff. I can't I can't prove it yet. I'm trying to find out if uh, he uh, if he's a Texas uh, Ranger. I believe. And I don't, I don't I really don't know who every, anybody anybody else is here, but I do find them very interesting, and uh, so I I put them up on the wall. I have a photo of a guy, he's probably about 80 years old, sitting in a chair with his hands folded on his lap. Uh, and he is the most interesting looking person in the world. The photo, it's actually a, it's a banner, about six feet tall. And I swear, before I go, I'm gonna find out who that guy is. Uh, I, got, I got some, uh, I got about 15 group photos from the naval recruits from the Great Lakes, uh, World War II uh, re re recruits, uh, with the name of the uh, one one uh, commanding officer. Uh, I got his name and I got the company name, uh, but I, kept, I don't have the names of the sailors. I called I called the Navy. Uh, I called, uh, I, can't, I can't think of exactly who it was. I called a number of different people that were involved in the troop training in NARA, I guess, National NARA. Uh, and I couldn't get anybody to help me out. And I just diffused, as a matter of fact. Have you posted <laughs> them on your site? Yeah, they're on there. Let's see if you go. Uh, Keyword search. Um, Great Lakes. Okay, I got to scroll down. There's, there's some of them there. See all those people there? Uh, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, there you go. So uh, there's 1944, July 27, Company 1516B. Uh, and this one doesn't have the commander. Yeah, the commander's name is uh, here, but I can't see it. It's probably over the other side. I broke it up in pieces because I couldn't get the whole thing. So it's, it's, it's like in thirds or halves. So the next photo over from this would be uh, the one that has the name. Uh, here we go. If any of us can identify maybe our relatives in those photos, how would we let you know? Joe at deadfred.com. Thank you. You're welcome. I definitely will be looking for cousins. Okay. Hope you find some. Uh, and you Joe, these Joe, to let you know, um, I looked in our in our catalog here in our library. We have, by Maureen Taylor, we have Family Photo Detective, Learn How to Find Genealogy Clues in Old Photos. And yeah. we have, let's see here, what else do we have by her? Um, Uncovering your ancestry through family photographs. And we also have preserving your family photographs, how to care for your family photographs from, um, from I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, dag daguerreo types to digital yeah. imaging. Right. And right. then uh, let's see here, what else do we have here? Looks like we have a couple more too. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have fashionable folks, hairstyles 1840 to 1900. 
uh, bonnets and hats, 1840 to 1900, and the last muster. So we have quite a few books by Maureen Taylor. That last muster is gone from the Civil War. Uh, revolutionary ones, right? Yeah, she's got a, she's got a few out there, isn't she? And they're very interesting. I got a ball. There's some of them. We'll get them. Yeah, and I got them on my. They're upstairs in my study. So, I think that brings us to an end. Uh, let me think. Um, yeah, that's about all I can think of it. Okay, well, let me, let me give the class just one last few seconds here to ask questions. If okay. anybody else has any questions, please unmute your microphone. Yeah, I oh, have oh, well, I got, Okay, yeah. Um, I know she had a, what appeared to be a military fo um, photo of maybe, um, what do they call that? The basic training photo of, of yeah. the people. Yeah. Are those available on the internet anywhere? Yeah. They're on my website. Well, I'm, no, I'm talking about, um, like I was in the military, but I lost mine uh, years ago, and that was back in 73. Does the military put post those anywhere? Or? You know, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I, I think they don't. I don't think they go to that length. Uh, you know, everybody who was in your company has a copy of it or a guy copy of it. So it should be available. And if not, I mean, you go to eBay. There's always something popping up on eBay, uh, and, but um, you know would I don't. They, have, would I don't they have, be in the National Archives? Well, I would think they would, but I, I haven't had any luck. Now I got my my. I don't even have my when I was I, I got out of the boot camp in 1965, and uh, I don't have mine. I had it once upon a time, but I no longer have it. I probably could find it if I needed to. But uh, yeah, I, I, I was in the Navy for well, six years. those photos from Great Lakes, did you attempt to contact Great Lakes? Yes. And they, they don't have any? Nope. Well, well she says that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just something they don't do anymore. Uh, I don't know. But I tried a few times and I gave it up because I was always I was getting behind. So I, I put a note out to different people that I was looking for some answers and didn't get them. So anyway, they're on the ar archive if anybody you know finds them. There hasn't been a lot of people. Write me about them. So I don't think there's someday somebody will. Well, th thank you, Joe. Uh, does the class have any other questions? Give it just a few seconds. All right. Well, Joe, I wanted to say thank you very much for being with us today and, and sharing your your website and your talent and your and your passion with us. And uh, I just wanted before I say goodbye, uh, I wanted to also say thank you for allowing us to record. Uh, it will take our marketing department a few weeks to get this posted onto our YouTube channel, but I'll let you know when it is. And in the meantime, uh, before everyone starts to log out, everyone's invited to stay for the second half of class. We hope you will. If you uh, would like to uh, log out now, if there's anything in the chat box you want, make sure to download it before you leave. If you'd like to stay for the second half of class, we hope you do. Just go ahead and uh, as soon as I stop the recording, go ahead and turn on your microphones and your cameras. So with that, Joe, uh, I'll say thank you so much, and we really appreciate your time today. Well, I enjoyed I enjoyed it very much. I I, I do I do enjoy talking to people about my my website. I can't I can't say enough about it. And, and then you're all very nice asking questions and coming up to listen to me talk. So thank you. Well, thank uh, you. Okay. And you have a great day. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.